Hey, this is Old Duke, and uh, this is Silas, my sidekick, and we're building uh, cages today. And uh, we're going to continue from the first uh, from the first part of the Pro Series, and uh, this uh, second part is we're going to concentrate on on the wire and the improvements that the cages have over uh, the old hooches. Uh, I don't have to tell you that you don't want to end up with with anything like this this is where we pulled it up we just pulled this out of the shed and replaced we got one cage up and replaced this but this is uh this is back when i built what what i had it's made out of chicken wire and i know you're not supposed to use it but everything was scraps and i was in the rabbit business and it's junked out now so i'll probably turn it up on the side and maybe Put a new board on the top, knock out the top and bottom, and use it for a composter or something there, fill the leaves in and get the worms in and everything like that. That's probably gonna be a composter. And uh, but the reason we're building these new cages is because there's a lot of improvements. One one improvement is the roof, the roof is too close to the uh, rabbits and there's a lot of heat transfer down. And uh, that's, that's the primary reason why we're gonna have a raised roof is because of the heat transfer from the tin. Another, no, <clears throat> another improvement, it's just easier to clean. You can see, you can see all this dirt down through here. And you see how messy it was in the past. This half inch wire, it, it rots down and uh, you had trouble with it. And then that's when you get, that's when you get your bad feet on your rabbits, is when the, the bottom goes bad. And this wire isn't heavy enough to uh, take care of that. So we're going with, we're improving the wire and uh, we're raising the roof. And uh, we're eliminating a lot of the wood where, where it's unsanitary. And another good thing about not having these wood hutches is the fact that they're, uh, these new wire cages are portable and they're hanging in, in the shed. And if you ever had to move them, uh, relocate, whatever you might want to do, might want to sell, might want to get out of the rabbit business. Whatever you want to do, well, you can just cut the wires and move the cages out. So we'll go over here. Uh, another thing too is this is worth a lot more money. When you get through with this, you can uh, sell these cages, but you can't hardly sell these wood hooches after they after they're used. And uh, anyway, we we uh, do a lot. We use a lot of old screws and all that. I hear a lot about re purposes and all but you can see we use these old screws and hinges and we keep our old hardware and uh, I'll go over it right quick with you again I just put these hinges on here because I didn't have any before so I just screwed down the top and uh, so I put these hinges on here and I found an old hasp that I'm going to be able to use on the top but I'm going to put a board in here with these slide barrels in there to keep them Keep them out of their uh, keep them out of their nesting box after they kindle. But anyway, this will go on there like that, and we'll have uh, we'll have a real nice box here for them to live in. I got my other rabbits living in these other boxes right now, and I'll close them off before they kindle. Now uh, these new cages. We part one series one. We had to we we went over the framework and everything. But another good son, you have to stay out of the way of the camera just for a minute. The uh, the frame set in so that uh, when they when they crap and pee and everything, then it's not on top of the wood. See, it's just metal on the corner, so the wood's set in on the frame. The uh, uh, but that's the good thing about the frame because it, it holds up the center of the cage and it also supports our nesting boxes on the ends, our new permanent nesting boxes. The, uh, 
when we put this thing together, we uh, cut our, our floor out about half inch by one, and then we put four J clips down through the whole length of the back wall, down at the bottom. And then we put three J clips at the bottom on the divider walls. And we just laid all those down and then laid the back wall on the top until we were ready to stand it up. And then all we had to do was put four J clips down through this side and then three up the walls and this is what we ended up with. Now as you're spreading these four, it's good to put the four clips across here because uh, you're going to be working the gaps, the widest gaps out on this whole run. Every time you put these clips in here, there's going to be another gap to form and you go to the widest gap and you keep filling in the widest gap. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you there's a reason for it is because a lot of this wire is defective and you've got to work work the wire in so that uh, so that you can take care of the gaps. You don't want to start on one end and work all the way down and then have trouble on the corner. So you work it all in uh, by using four across the bottom and three across and then standing it up and then putting all your clips together. You're making sure the whole time you're putting clips in there that the top is even with the sides. The dividers are even with the sides on all the way down. So you're working in uh, trying to keep these two together. Now the important thing is cutting this wire is to cut the ends of it off. And even, and I'm gonna show you a way to uh, do that, but you'll want all these, these cut where it's just straight down that piece of wire. And what you're going to do is you're going to use this top wire as a guide. And you're going to use a, a cut-off disc and cut that wire off all the way down. And you're going to use it for guide, and I'm going to show you how to do it. And this, this wire is going to be on top. This short wire is going to be on top, and you're going to go straight down the side of it when you cut. The... Uh, You'll have to back up, honey, because I always roll this wire out with the uh, curved side down. I see too many people trying to roll it out this way, and I left these on here for a reason because this can come back and hit you in the eye if you're not if you leave those on there. And you're rolling it out with the curve down. This thing can spring back. It just got me right there. So we don't. We're not going to do that. We're not going to fire with it. We're going to cut these off. I'm going to make a cut. I'm going to show you how to do it safely, and uh, you won't ever have to worry about getting hurt with these ends by leaving them on there. But I'm going. I'm going to cut it off somewhere right in here. So I'm going to start with my roll behind it. I'm going to need 10 foot. This is going to be my top. This is one, one by two. And so I'm going to start with, because it's going to roll towards me. I'm going to start a little bit behind my, behind my mark. I'm going to roll this thing out. Like so. Lay it down. It's kind of like you got to dance with. It's kind of like doing a tooth set. I'll drag it back again until I get my 10 foot out. Excuse me, son. Alright, that'll be somewhere around there. Then I'm just going to walk on it. Making sure there's no obstacles under there. Making sure that I'm walking on worse flat. That's another thing too I didn't mention. Your saw horses have to be flat before you do all these J clips because you don't want to clip it together with, with it twisted. So make sure that you shim under your saw horses or whatever your surface you're working on is flat. All right.
and we're gonna measure down 10 foot. See how see how your wire is already laying flat? We're not setting anything on top of it, trying to keep it curled, you know, from curling up or anything. We're walking on it and keeping it flat. All right, hold me on the inside. Had to come around on this side because uh, always double check when you when you mark and double check and everything's good. I'm gonna mark it on this side of the wire. And you can mark it all the way down right quick just so you don't get messed up when you go to cutting and make your wire and make your marks big enough where you can see them. I think we may alongside that. All right, son. It's gonna be alongside that uh, that piece of wire. Now I'm gonna show you. When you using wire cutters, I have a pair of wire cutters here. Though. When you wire using wire cutters, they always have leave a little bit. I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. See that right there? That right there? That, that messes you up when you're building your wire. Yeah, trying to put all your wire together. So we're going to cut it off where it's going to be even. This will be, be my guide wire with it on top. And I'm going to go straight down the side of it with this, with this cutoff disc. It's a 16th inch disc. It's a cheap Chinese grinder I got at Harbor Freight. And it's good enough to cut wire. Alright, and it's gonna go down, I'm gonna go down the side of this, just like this. And that's gonna guide, that's gonna guide this disc. And it's gonna be perfect, it's gonna be a perfect edge. Well, all you gotta do is just touch it up. Alright, uh, so. Safety glasses and gloves, right? This is what we need. This is number one before we uh, cut anything. Let me put them on the right hand. Good thing I wasn't drinking beer last night. Thing would be. I might mess up some wire or something if I'm drinking beer. I quit all that a long time ago. Alright. I'm going to go ahead and roll this down a little bit so I can keep it nice and sturdy. I can see my marks. Now, this is my end of my wire. So if I cut this off, I'm going to have the same problem I did earlier. I'm going to have these pieces right here you're gonna be left on this other one so what I'm going to do I'll cut this off and then I'll show you what I'm going to do see that wire guys that all the way through you're looking straight at it real simple and it's easier than uh It's easier than cutting it with a wire cutter. And then I'll take it, you can grind with this thin disc. I'll take it and I'll just hit it like that in an angle. And that's a perfect, that's a perfect edge right there for, for building your cage. And look how straight your wire is. Stand that end up, Sauce. See how, see how straight it is? We're not dealing with a bunch of curves and stuff. But we'll lay this on top here because this is going to be the, the top piece. We're going to lay it on top. 
I don't want it to curve side up. Curve side up. There you go. And we'll lay that right there on top. I'm going to have to cut my demonstration. Yeah, you got to be careful. Got yeah. it? Uh, anyway. Now we'll do this just like we did the bottom. There'll be four J clips down through here. Four J clips down through here. And then we'll start getting the wide, the gaps. The gaps will start forming. Four down this way. Four J clips down this way and three on the ends. And then the middle dividers. You don't want to put this on until after you've done every, all the other J clips on the bottoms and up the sides. Uh, every two inches on the bottom, all the way across, and every four inch up the sides and on the top. That's about all that's required for the J clip. All right, on this, we're gonna go ahead and clean this up because we're gonna use this wire later. And there's two ways of doing this. One would be to cut the uh, Cut, just cut these off right here. You're gonna save a little bit there, you know, by just cutting those off because they're useless. But if you do it this other way, then you're gonna uh, lose an extra inch. But I could walk down this wire, this wire being on the top. I could walk down it and cut it the same way I did that, and then this would all be one piece. So if you don't want to fill uh, food with all these individual pieces, if you're in the grass, you don't want to lose them, then you can cut it. Take go back another inch and cut it straight down like that and grind it like I did. But if you're going to do these little pieces and save your wire, the best thing to do is just nick it. I did, I nicked it, and then you just break it off with your hand and keeping it in your hand. Then that way, I don't that's what I do because I don't like losing an inch every time I make a cut. But this is the easy way to do it, and then you don't have to worry about them dropping in the grass. Or you know, if you, you're on a concrete or something and you're gonna clean it up, I don't guess you have to worry about it. But anyway, this is the best way to do that. And then you can go back through and grind it and then it'll be ready for your next piece. So that's how you cut out, that's how you cut out all your panels. So you wanna lay these on the table for me? All right. There again, these J clips. I think we already showed you, but this is the two. The J clip goes in there like that. The J toward the bottom side. And then it just goes around. Like so. I'll show you that on the door. Uh, right here. I've already flattened this out, and I've already had the door. The, the sizes are in the first part of the series, but uh, you'll what you'll do is we're gonna cut it, cut it above the kick guard. And we'll find the center of the cage. Now, if you have obstacles in the way, you may not want to set the door in the middle. If you have posts or something for your roof. You may have to move it around, but allow for your feeder and your water. And preferably, they need to be away from each other and uh, away from their hole. If you're going to keep a permanent nesting box, you got to put it as far away from the hole as possible so that uh, they'll, uh, they'll tend to walk and all that and they'll get a little more exercise. 
But uh, uh, one one thing I want to talk about, and this is extremely important for their feet that I didn't discuss earlier. But this, if you look down in here, this half inch wire. This is a 40 inch cage. So their run is down this way and then they turn around and come back. So they're running, they're pulling against this wire this way. And so the, the short wires, the 24 inch wire that's running the length needs to be on top. This wire right here needs to be on top. If it's uh, turned around and it's on the bottom, then their feet are, are, are pulling against these long ones, the, the long way. So when they're pulling, they're pulling against the half inch instead of the one inch. So always make sure when you put the bottom in, you put these, the, these wires up. And then that way it's a lot better for the feet. And down here, they just turn around. But when they take off running, they're pulling against the top of the half inch mesh. So that's extremely important. All right, we're gonna leave the kick guard in here from the bottom to keep the strength of the cage. We're gonna measure from the outside, the outside of the cage that's 40 inches. So I put a mark here at 20. All right, the cage, uh, is uh, the opening is 16 by 10 and the doors 18 by 14. So if it's 16 by, by 10, then we want to come from the center, which is 20, and we want to go eight inches. All right, when you go over eight inches, you want to mark it at the seven inch mark because you don't want to cut your eight inch piece out, that's your corner. All right, so I've already marked it seven that way and seven this way, and that'll make my opening. So always, after you get your marks in there, measure it on the inside and make sure that you don't have it marked anywhere past the 16 by 10. You can see all my marks here, I believe. Yeah, it's almost 10 right there. But Anyway, there's a half inch there, but I don't want to cut none of my kick guard out. So that's going to be my opening. So I'm going to cut that with my wire wheel. Y'all stand back a little bit. And uh, we'll cut that out. I just, like I said, I just want to make sure that you don't cut these corners. That's the biggest mistake people make is when they measure it, they cut out the piece that they're measuring to. You don't want to do that. All right. You're always mindful where you're throwing your sparks. And and there again, we're going to go, go, go down the inside of that wire. I know it's going to be a long video, but this is some important stuff. Go too deep where your disc is. You just stay just enough depth into the wire to cut the wire off. I left one on there and I'll get a hold of it like that so it don't get away from it. Now I'm going to clean it up.
can tell when it's cleaned up because then it don't grab the dish doesn't grab on the side. But we got this uh, guard we use. You can buy it to ravage supplies, and it'll go over the. I'd suggest getting this, even though you got it cleaned up. It'll go all the way around the opening. But it's uh, if your rabbit kicks or something like that, you know, not all rabbits are all that friendly. But anyway, you get one that kicks, and you don't want them to get hurt. The uh, we're gonna put this door on here. I'm gonna show you where you gotta mount it. We left four inches in the top, and we left all the kick guard in the bottom. Then we found the center, and then moved over and cut the seven inches out, and that made that made it uh, seven inches from center both ways, and that made it sixteen inches long. All right. And we're gonna hang this door. This is another important thing. We don't want to, we're gonna hinge it one inch back from the opening. But you don't want to mount it with the with the rods toward the cage. These rods are on that side. We want these on the outside. So you, if you put put it against there, they're actually they're getting in the way of making a good tight fit. So you'll turn it over and get this rod, this long rod against that one. And see that see that just makes a tighter fit. Alright. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna put our first J clip. I've evened it up top and bottom. Our first J clip is going to go right in here. And that's going, and you can twist that. If you can see that real good, you're going to twist that and, and keep doing it like this till it's good and tight. And see that? Putting it above this, where the door is. Putting it above that, that's going to hold the door open. And that's going to be like our hinges. I'm going to put another one in through here. You only need three or four hinges, uh, hinges down through here, but that's going to hold your wire up where it needs to be. See, every one of them is going to hold it. Hold this wire, this wire up from there. And there you are, there's your door right there. And then you can install your latches and everything you want to do. Uh, you can cut you. I showed about cutting the feeders out, you know, and making them real tight that don't go all the way. I already showed that on one. So if you hadn't, if you hadn't looked at the uh, uh, first part of my series, then y'all go back and look at it because it'll, uh, it's got a lot to do with this one here. And, uh, I hope this has been helpful and, uh, I hope you, you'll hit a like and, and subscribe to my videos because I'm going to give, be giving you a lot of first-hand information and uh, trade secrets, you know, that people don't like to tell you, but I like for people to work safely and, and have fun while they're doing it. And this is an easy cage build. It's a nice housing for your rabbits, permanent housing. It's a good floor. Man, they don't let them tell you it hurts their feet because they're wrong. It ain't nothing but bad wire going to hurt your feet when they tear it up. And this is good wire for a floor. It's nice size for them to get exercise. They got their, their uh, house. And uh, they like it. We, we like them. We like to take care of them. I don't see much difference between a pet and raising a, a rabbit as a pet or a meat rabbit or whatever. But this is for large rabbits. And we're raising New Zealanders. And anyway... Uh, I hope you uh, have a good time getting in the rabbit business and we'll try and make it easy for you. So like and subscribe and we'll see you later.